<laughs> okay. So this isn't my lucky t-shirt. I thought maybe this whole thing would be a little bit less scary if I could wear my lucky t-shirt. But when my friends found out I was doing this talk, they were all like, Tegan, don't you even think about wearing that old unisex shirt you like to wear so much. And I was like, guys, I can wear a unisex shirt on stage and still be a strong feminine presence. But they were not very supportive of this idea, so I didn't wear it. <laughs> And they said to me, if you don't want to be scared on stage, just do what normal people do when they're public speaking and picture everyone in the audience naked, right? But I know from dating experience mostly that picturing somebody naked and still making sense when you talk to them is really difficult, <laughs> if not impossible. So, um, yeah, so I said, guys, it's fine. I'd rather just be a little bit scared up here. But it is fine, because being scared is kind of like my hobby, which sounds weird, but I can explain with pictures. So you know how sometimes you get this voice, that yeah, matches, um, in your head, and it tells you to do a thing you can call it heart or gut or any body part, really. I'll go with heart. And it wants to take you here, to the land of magical possibilities, which looks great, right? But then this other voice jumps in the way. <laughs> I'll call it fear. <laughs> with a million different reasons why doing the thing would be a very, very terrible idea. <laughs> And that voice wants to take you or keep you here, in your comfort zone. <laughs> and I have a kind of interesting history with each of these two voices, um, choosing the one over the other. So essentially, choosing the heart one over the fear one underlies pretty much every single definition of courage that we have in the world ever. It's like courage from first principles. And my history uh, comes from being an endurance adventurer for a while. And adventurers are supposed to know about fear and all these things. Uh, and the way that I got into <laughs> adventuring was basically my heart is very bad at seeing how things could possibly go wrong. <laughs> it's got no foresight. So it comes up with a lot of ideas that are not super practical. And that would be fine under normal circumstances because fear should get in the way and veto, <laughs> veto the bad ideas early enough. But my fear likes to wait uh, until <laughs> it's way too late before it says anything. So through this unfortunate combination of incompetent voices in my head, I found myself doing things like spending a year riding my bicycle through Africa and inventing and completing a 2,000 kilometer triathlon in New Zealand, even though I could barely swim. And I'm not just saying that, like lifeguards actually tried to come and rescue me because apparently my freestyle looks like drowning. <laughs> <laughs> and basically just mucking around around the world with my bicycle and a tent and no real idea what I was actually doing. <laughs> and I learned that the way adventure teaches you about courage is by putting you in situations where retreating into your comfort zone is just physically not an option. For example, when you're stuck on this big hypothetical mountain in Spain, 
because hypothetically, when you looked at the map, you saw dark green and you thought that meant trees. It turns out that actually means altitude. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> so <laughs> you're stuck up there, and eventually you come across some houses, and your heart voice is like, oh, great, let's go knock on somebody's door and ask for help. And uh, you're an introvert, and you really don't want to do that because it sounds awkward and embarrassing. So you turn to fear, and you're like, OK, buddy, what are my options? And fear looks at you with that face, and you realize he's got nothing. <laughs> So you're forced to do the thing your heart told you to do, which is go and knock on the door, whatever. And when you do that, often something wonderful happens, like you meet amazing Spanish people who give you wine. And <laughs> <laughs> in real life, courage can get you way more than wine, right? Without a lot of courage, we would never, ever have got to space, oh, got to space, or, oh. <laughs> and we would never be able to systematically, or to fight systematic oppression. But the real benefit of courage, the most important benefit, comes from knowing that your life does not end here, at the borders of your comfort zone. Knowledge that you are a brave person, capable of honoring what's important to you, even when that's not the easiest thing to do. So if you want the good things in life, right, all you have to do is choose that one and not that one, and it's easy, it's simple, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, not quite. As I learned last year, when I got home from a long adventure, it was the beginning of the year, and you know how at the beginning of the year you're pretty excited to do something new, got that new year feeling, and you think this year is going to be special, even though it doesn't always work out like that. Um. <laughs> and my thing at the beginning of last year was I'm ready to pursue my passion, which was drawing these really ridiculous comics, basically, um, like this. <laughs> And like this. <laughs> and like this. <laughs> so in true millennial spirit, I moved back home to live with my parents and decided to try and become a full-time cartoonist. Uh, and even though I loved Making cartoons, it was really difficult. Cartooning is one of those careers where when people ask me what I do, I say, I'm a cartoonist. And they say, oh, and what do you do for a living? <laughs> At the beginning, it was basically just like this constant battle between my self-esteem and bank balance, fighting to see who could be the lowest. And after a while of going through that, after about a year, I started to hear a familiar voice in my head telling me to go on an adventure. I was like, oh, thank God. I'm going to pack everything up, stop the cartooning, and go to Europe, do manual labor, and save up um, to do the most toughest, dangerousest bicycle race in the world called the Transcontinental Race Across Europe. And my parents didn't really approve of this idea. Um, not actually because I might die, <laughs> as you might think, but they disapproved because they perceived that my giving up cartooning, which was the thing that added the most richness to my life, figuratively, anyway, <laughs> giving that up 
And running off to go and do an adventure, which is something familiar and comfortable to me, that was the exact opposite of brave. And it's really annoying when your parents are right. <laughs> but mine were. I just assumed that something big and physical and dangerous like adventure couldn't possibly count as a comfort zone. And something like sitting in your bedroom drawing pictures of lawnmowers didn't really <laughs> count <laughs> as something that could be perceived as brave. I'd internalized this narrative of courage that we have, this very limited narrative, this narrative. That's not actually one of my comics. Um, <laughs> I asked my teacher friends from around the world to get the kids in their classes to, to draw pictures of bravery, and they drew these pictures of people fighting things, uh, <laughs> big things with legs, and climbing mountains, and rescuing princesses, even. And these are all things that I think we could call sexy courage. But if we're honest with ourselves, we we have to admit that sometimes the things that our hearts are telling us to do just aren't that sexy. They're kind of <laughs> boring. Which makes this unsexy courage way, way more difficult than sexy courage. Like you don't get the same type of validation or support. There's nobody calling you from the radio like when you're on an adventure. Like, hey, give us an update on your uh, <coughs> adulthood. You're like, <laughs> yes, well, um, it's pretty tough out here, but I've already powered through two panic attacks today and one existential crisis. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm going strong. While I'm here, I'd like to thank my amazing sponsors, Caffeine and Sugar. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> but what I've noticed, the funny thing about courage is, at least in my experience of staying home to draw these comics, is that sometimes the smallest, least sexy acts are the ones that bring the deepest sense of fulfillment. Basically, what I'm saying is when your heart inside your head is saying where you should be led, and fear tells you to hide in bed or go do something cool instead, remember that you have a choice to listen to whichever voice. This one, the heart, might be less appealing it might give you a nervous feeling, but choose it. And you just might see how wonderful your life can be. And even if what you are braving doesn't look like damsel saving, or fighting fires, or saving trees, or swimming shark-infested seas, if it's something slightly more discreet, like trying something new to eat, or just for once not saying yes, or putting on a sexy dress, or hearing something hard to hear, these things could all be facing fear. So if you want your world to grow in ways you can't begin to know, please do what's scary just for you, because that's the bravest thing you'll ever do.